number 16, Trevor Lord. Also on defense, number 18, Brandon Baker. A pleasant good evening to you all from the Danbury Ice Arena. It's another night in the Fed, and it's alumni night at the Danbury Ice Arena. The hat tricks honoring the venerable hockey history of this great city of Danbury, Connecticut. Welcome on board for what promises to be an excellent evening of hockey between the Danbury hat tricks, who are the first team in the FPHL to record 100 points this season. And the Watertown Wolves wrestling for playoff spot, the defending champions, currently sitting just a spot above the Elmira Mammoth and working on securing a postseason spot. They're getting closer and closer as the days go on by. Welcome to the Danbury Ice Arena, to the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. I'm Chris Lynch, the Hattricks riding a long nine game winning streak coming into tonight's game. Got the win in Watertown last night in Watertown, ending a four game road stretch. A hat trick for Daniel McKittrick and a two goal effort for Igor Borshev. An excellent, excellent, totally balanced offensive performance for the Danbury hat tricks, in which they also got three assists from Johnny Ruiz and also got a good time in net from Brian Wilson. No Willie in net tonight. Frankie McClendon takes the spot between the pipes for the Danbury Hat Tricks. Tobias Ojik, Brendan Sheehan, who's back from playing in the SPHL, will be at center, and Jacob Radcliffe will be on his right. And also, friend of the program, Gordy Bunnell, will be back on the ice. He'll be playing alongside Igor Borshev and Dmitry Kuznetsov, but don't expect that to be too, too long until they put him back up on the line with Johnny Ruiz, his very, very tight friend. Expect that to be a pairing and a grouping that stays together for a good long while. A lot of green in the building this evening. They're honoring the 2013 Danbury Whalers who won the Commissioner's Cup and inducting three individuals into the hockey, Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor this evening. Ed Campbell, Steve Brown, and Alan Friedman. They'll be coming on the ice during the first intermission along with a number of the other alums from throughout the esteemed history of hockey here in Danbury. Coaches are coming onto the ice. Steve Brown, an assistant coach in full suit, will be on the bench and he'll be staying around to go on the ice and get his applause from the fans and probably say a few words to the crowd. You always let Steve Brown have the microphone, always. <laughs> And actually, he told me something interesting that Brown does want to come back and play eventually. He does want to, he's, he feels like he's got a little bit more in, uh, in the tank as far as he is concerned, as far as being a player is concerned, but has to make a couple of other situations work first. So we look forward to seeing Steve Brown in a Danbury uniform or in a hockey uniform at some point in the future. We enjoy having him as a coach so he'll be on the bench. Tyler Noseworthy and John Kripinski joining Billy McCreary on the bench. And Matt Voity doing the honors of directing the operation here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Building's starting to fill in. Let's give you very quickly the starters for the Watertown Wolves. Adam Wisco will be in net. Ismail Ralston will be backing him up. Parker Moskal, Trevor Lord, Brendan Baker, Timothy Payne and Elijah Wilson will get the starting spots for the Wolves. Luke Cohen and Charlie Penns Jr. leading the team from the bench for the evening. The defending champions looking for the ride up and the great honoring of the teams gone by, the Trashers, the Mad Hatters, the Whalers and the Titans before the Danbury Adricks came into existence ahead of the 2019-2020 season. So they won a division in their first season. Whalers, of course, won the Commissioner's Cup in 2013, competed for a number of other postseason spots. Danbury Titans won a regular season championship in 2016, and the Danbury Trashers, for all of their bravado and bluster, they played hockey effectively. They won 
the division championship in 2006. Galantes are here and will be coming onto the ice. Of course, Ed Campbell, former UMass Lowman and the captain of that Whalers team is here. Alan Freeman, who's an executive. Adam Blanchett, Carlo Ricci, Phil Esposito, the coach of the championship team. Anthony Pisano, Tyler Noseworthy, who played for that Whalers team, is also on the bench in assistant capacity and currently serves as the head coach of the Danbury Junior Hat Tricks, the NA3 level, whose season just came to a conclusion only yesterday. We'll throw things downstairs for Dre, the public address announcer. So a quick pause back in a little bit from up top. Here are the Danbury Hat Tricks starting lineups. Thank you. Fans, we've got the Melody family here. His wife, Heather, daughter, Lauren, his brother, Dave. And let me tell you, these guys sat in session 101. They never missed a game. They were inseparable. The man threw carrots and chuckle pucks every night. And he was what the hat tricks were all about. Dave, we are devastated about the loss of Doug. And we wanted to just pay respects to you and your family and just tell you what he meant to us. And I know you, I just wanted to give you the microphone and share your words about him. Doug loved the hat tricks. We did miss a game, whatever it was, we absolutely had to. We love you guys and win one for Doug tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you stand and remove your caps and direct your attention to the flags as we play the national anthem. Playing the Canadian national anthem tonight, please welcome in-house organist Hudson Di Tomasa.
sing with me. Next up, we've got Dominique on her birthday. Dominique. Dominique. Oh, yeah. All right, here he is, huge hits and YouTube sensation. The opening ceremonies have been concluded. The Danbury Hat Tricks wearing their specially designed, inspired by the Danbury Whalers jerseys. It's a beautiful jersey. Danbury has not had a bad one all season. We'll be going from left to right across your internet waves. Watertown in the road, whites going the opposite direction. Brendan Sheehan will be taking the opening face-off against Parker Muscal, and here we go. The puck is dropped. We're underway from the Danbury Ice Arena. Tobias Ojik will try and work this one on. Plays it backwards and across. A little too far for Ratcliffe. We'll have to sprint in. It's picked up pretty quickly by Brandon Baker. We'll hold it and look for a release. The goaltending matchup again. Adam Wisco in net for the Watertown Wolves. Frankie McClendon in net for the Danbury Hattricks. This will be cleared on net. A little bit wide of McClendon. No icing. It was right at the red line when he let it go. McDonald will put it up to the wing for Robertson. Long across to the opposite side of the boards at the blue line. Ojik with a huge hit. Sheehan will get on it. Leave it forward for McKittrick. Who had three goals in last night's game. Well, Danbury fans getting certainly a rise out of the physical nature to the start of this game. Loose puck at the center logo. Carter will look for somewhere to go with it. McDonald forward, tipped by Marsha Son. Walks in at the top of the circle, looks for the shot, save made. Marsha Son up the left wing, up the right wing rather, at the circle. Pulls up, tries to get some space. Left it for Ruiz, couldn't control it on his stick. Ruiz will make some space for himself. Threw it in front, caught the goaltender Wisco's stick. Good offensive chance in the early going for the hat tricks. Ruiz will work this on. Marcia Son didn't have anywhere to go with it. Looks for it out. Zach Pamaleon steps into it. Shot blocked away. Ruiz will hold it and ring it. Down for Gordy. Gordy Bennell seeing his first time on home ice. A good long wild. Recovered from his injury. And it looks pretty good. Igor Borshev. And a couple of goals in last night's game. We'll ring it a bit high. Gonzalez settles it. Looks for it on net. Bennell got a tip on it. 
Kuznetsov to Benel behind the net. Kuznetsov will spin with it and put it to the point. Couple of bounces, lobbed in. Borshev will settle it, look for some room. Wanted to put it to the circle and found the awaiting stick of Zach Horn instead. Benel with the hit, nearly cleared out. Settled by Xavier Abdella, looks for the shot on net. It's blocked down before it ever got on. Borshev wanted to play it to the circle. These teams combined for a ton of shots and a long sequence of play to start the game off. Cleared up the boards. Ojik in Amesbury off the bench. Ojik will sail the shot wide. Amesbury will go and get this puck. Flipped on by Sheehan. Kept in. Good keep by Johnny McDonald. Glides in. Backhand. Threw it in front. And they score! A beautiful setup by Johnny McDonald. You'll see it again here. Got to it. The net was open, and that's off of the excellent feed and setup by Johnny McDonald. Ojik just pots it. Across here, a good feed, and here come the carrots. Raining down on the ice sheet. It's tradition here at the Danbury Ice Arena that after the first goal, you see it. There's Ojek having a chat. His fourth goal of the season, his 10th point in his 12th game played. The scoring is really simple. I I got the setup wrong. Can I see that playback one more time, actually? From the whole setup, because being listed as Tobias Ojek, you'll see it again here. Here's the glide. It's thrown to him by Johnny McDonald. So, yeah, the assist currently being ruled to Sheehan. It should be a Johnny McDonald assist. What would be his 23rd assist of the season, his 31st point in his 40th game of the season. He's been one of the most consistent performers for this unit. And he gets the first assist to start things off. Amesbury on the ice with Samuel Rapchek. Draw is down. We've had one stoppage in play and it's a goal. A pretty good start to the evening. Ojik will flip this out. Amesbury sprints in. Payne gets upended. Sheehan will get to the loose puck. Riley Robertson also seeing his first game action in a bit. Gets crunched. Tried to work it through. Marsha Son still down. They get him up. And that'll stop the play for a penalty. It'll be just a high stick. No power play to result from it for the Wolves. Ruiz and Horn on the dot. Shots are two to one in favor of the hat tricks. Goals are one nothing in favor of the hat tricks. Arshasan and McKittrick collide. The puck will spring free along the half boards and out. Little bit too far ahead of Chris Corgan and it'll turn into an icing. Yeah, the assist has been updated. So yes, it is gonna be ruled in the books as being a John, Johnny McDonald score on the assist. Ruiz will step to the dot. Win the draw to Marchesan. Winds up for the one-timer. It caught a Kittrick on the way in and skied over the net. Pamela on back. He's moved to a full-time defenseman role. On comes Ruiz. Winds up wants the shot. It's tipped on the way in by Baker. The Kittrick will try and work it up to the point. It finds Corgan's stick instead. 
Off the boards, a little bit wide of McClendon. Only faced one shot so far. He's only had to. Lobbed high. Kicked and a little bit wide of Borshev. Wrestling for it with McGuire. Dowler will flip it across. They're announcing the goal in-house. And a loose puck. Here's Netsov taking everything with him. It'll be cleared and Abdella. Not going to be called an ice. They're going to say it hit a hat trick stick last. A little bit wide. This is pretty clearly going to be an icing. Offensive zone faceoff for the Wolves. Elijah Wilson going against Igor Borshev. Borshev will win it cleanly. Abdella up the wing. Benel. Played in, try to dip through one man. Benel. Sandwiches man into the boards. Hands off for Borshev. The shot will be knocked straight upstairs. And we'll get our first timeout of the day. And we'll take a breather, come back in a moment. Quick pause back in a moment for the Dan Murray Ice Arena. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Five minutes and five seconds into proceedings here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Matt Tricks in the lead. Quick word from our friends at Capella Coffee. Real coffee, good coffee, no great coffee. Plus hot chocolate right here on the concourse level at the Danbury Ice Arena. Our friends at Capella Coffee. This will spring its way free. Off the wings, Dowler will knock it down. And work it around the board. Ojik, Sheehan got decked. And Radcliffe spins out of a hit. Puck sits on his stick. Wolves will carry this out. Only three shots on goal so far. Alamantiditis believes that should have been a penalty. It'll be a shot instead for Ojik. And a save for Wisco. Special happy birthday to Carolyn from John and Lou. Happy birthday, Carolyn. Stick around for the intermissions. We'll be welcoming Ed Campbell, Steve Brown, and Alan Friedman into the Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor. Well-deserved honor for all three. One of those champions from the 13 Whalers. Marshall will give it around the left side. Kittrick will be skied over Ruiz. McDonald. Tipped through McKittrick. Beneath Ruiz. Round away from Marshall Son. Maybe hit away from the play. Picked off by McKittrick. Walks into the circle. McKittrick tried to drag through. No room. Kittrick jostling and trading shoves with Colton McGuire and the hat tricks have scored again. The Danbury hat tricks lead it to nothing. Wow! A frantic sequence results in a Danbury goal. It's 2 nothing. Johnny Ruiz going through the line first. Let's see this again. If it's Ruiz, it's his 31st goal of the season. Let's see the sequence again, looking for the wraparound, got it to him, and Ruiz potted it. 
McKittrick traded a couple of shoves, and yes, indeed, it'll be Ruiz's fourth point of the weekend. Got three assists last night. McKittrick piled up a hat trick, so he'll get his 22nd assist on the season. Marcia Son will also get an assist on it. It'll be his 18th assist of the year. Abdella will knock it sky high. Xavier Abdella tried to work it forward and knocked down by Dmitry Kuznetsov. He'll spin. Kuzi looking for some room up to the wing. Borshev will look for the redirection and couldn't quite connect. Dowler glides in to keep it at the line. Looks for the shot on net and it's sent up sky high. 13 minutes on the dot remaining to be played here at the Danbury Ice Arena in the first period. Shots only listed up on the board as being three to one. Sheehan will step to the faceoff dot and win it. Dowler winds up, looks for the shot, knocked down. Ojik will glide across and crunch his man into the hard plastic. Ratcliffe can't keep it in, three on two, come the Wolves. A little bit too far for Corgan. And Sheehan will get on the loose puck. Ratcliffe will leave it. Sheehan gets on top of it, lays his check. Needs some punishment. Loose puck will be rung around. Watertown's got a player who's limping. Corgan's gonna head off. And this already a shorthanded Wolves team. Another hit thrown by Ojek. And he's still down. He's still down. Play is continuing at the Watertown offensive end. They will sound the whistle with 12.05 left to go. Brandon Baker got checked. And some of the Watertown players not terribly happy. Fans here at the Denver Ice Arena chirping. Goaltender Adam Wisco. This is going to be a neutral zone faceoff. Ruiz and Wilson will square off. Ruiz will win it. Gonzalez looks for some room forward. Abdella. It's by one man. Keep it running. Ruiz tries to get behind and can't. Free chance for Elijah Wilson. He'll go and fish this out in the corner. Tries the wrap around, didn't have to look. Wilson turns, hands off, sneaks underneath Ruiz's stick. Gonzalez tried to get it forward. He caught the awaiting stick and skated to Cove to Seaman instead. Gonzalez, and Abdella with some room to glide. Ruiz will settle it. Up the wing to Marcia Song. is hit. Ruiz already with a goal on to Marshall's on stick. Lines up for the shot. It stopped. Danbury has had the better of the offensive chances and looks. Ruiz and Amesbury jostling for puck possession. Watertown will come away with it. They'll fling it on a bit wide of the goal. Nice kick by Dowler. Cuts by one man and gets it over the blue line. On to put it on to Gordy Bennell. They're gonna say that Bennell got a piece of it. McGuire will pick it up and look for a release valve. Just about 10 minutes left. That is wide. Kuznetsov and Dowler there for it. Kuznetsov by Seaman. Gets to the circle, winds up, wants the shot. Blocker save made. Borshev with one on net. It's covered up. And we've got some more jostling. Corgan and Bennell. Tied up in front. Borshev separating with the man as well. They're going to pull Gordy Bennell out of the scrum. 
He'll skate away, his head's still intact. You know, the result of all of that is just gonna be a simple knock it off there, boys. 10-22, the time remaining. Clean face-off win for the Wolves. Flipped out, McDonald will settle it. Robertson caught Bunnell on the skate. Bunnell with some nifty handling. Looks like he never missed a day. Takes the hit, gets back up to the point. Walks in, winds up shot, blocker save, and it's sent upstairs. And that'll give us our under 10 media timeout from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Remember, Clancy is fancy. Nine minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the first period. Has returned to Danbury, tonight. Danbury bringing the back a bunch of the old favorites. Clean face-off win for Brendan Sheehan. He'll go behind, looks for the pass in front. He'll skitter up to Gonzalez at the point. To the circle, to the left, Abdella shoots it. Knocked down and a good save by Wisco. And again, that's at the end of the first period. We're gonna bring it all out. Number 71, Carl Ricci for Danbury Weller. Back in the building from the Great North. Also, Jimmy Galante, the founder of the Danbury Trashers. He is Draw the one by Ojek, Abdella. Playing very aggressively offensively today. Sheehan, some room, hands off for Gonzalez. Had to go on extended, shot on by Ratcliffe, knocked down. Sheehan, the shot, sent wide. Some room, Ratcliffe through Gonzalez's stick. Sheehan, ring it around. Ratcliffe. Try and get this out. Abdella knocks it down. Hattricks have to get back on sides. Abdella knocked down. Shots list is five to one in favor of the Hattricks. Hamill lay on. They try and work this free. Carried on, given to Marchesson. Dips through, looks for some room. Marchesson. Now contesting it against the boards, against three Wolves. Sheehan comes in to help him out. 8.40 the time remaining. Taken out by Don Carter Jr. Looks to fly it forward for Trevor Lord. A little too far, Dowler will get on it. Panaleon through the hit. The Kittrick high off the glass. Baker. Right and carried center. Knocked down by Pamela Leon. He's got some room to work with in front of him. Pamela Leon at the circle. Wanted to feed it back for McKittrick. Already with a point tonight. A four-point weekend. Shot on. Nearly covered. And left alone by Adam Wisco. Robertson. A lob it high and out. Over the glass. With seven minutes, 56 seconds, the time to go in the first. Caught Riley Robertson. And in the history, got some of the Ring of Honor inductees. Eddie Campbell, former Danbury Trasher, captain of the Danbury Whalers championship squad, draft pick of the New York Rangers. Eddie Robertson Campbell playing his tonight. first game 
since February 12th, excuse me, February 10th, somewhat ironically, against these same Watertown Wolves who has been recovering from injuries since. Gordy Bennell is also drawn back into the lineup. As Gingrich will try and settle this. Oh, we're running it a little bit too aggressively. It was Borshev for the shot. Went straight up, no hand pass. They're gonna say that McDonald never really got it with his hand. Kuznetsov will chip it and chase it. Eludes the hit to the top of the circle. Receives it again. Had some room, shot, big rebound. Settled by Corgan and lobbed out. Abdella just holding him work at two nothing hat tricks at 7.10 to go of the first period. Ruiz with one of the goals, the second one. First one belonging to Tobias Oja. Carter, the shot save made. Gonzalez will flip it to the blue line, glove down, whacked at. On the blue line and nearly out, not quite. Abdella will run it forward, given up to Radcliffe. He'll pull it up, thrown across. Nice pass for Tobias Ojek. He'll put it on net. Save made, and the rebound picked up by Sam Hrapchak. Gonzalez tried to settle it. Carter put it on. Shots updated. They're now 7-3 in favor of the hat tricks. Danbury looking for their 10th consecutive win of the season. McDonald tries to take it away, and that's going to be a... No, it's Ojik who tried to take it away. That's going to be a penalty against Tobias Ojik. He'll head off the ice. 6.05 to go. So for the first time tonight, the hat tricks are shorthanded. Watertown, a 14.1% power play, the very worst in the FPHL. Danbury, an 81.7% penalty kill. A decent job on the power play for the hat tricks. And Watertown looking to get themselves in rhythm. Ojik sitting in the box. They're a two-minute minor shot on McDonald. McClendon, rather, sorry, will put that right away in his mitt. Ojik assessed a hooking minor. So that's what he's sitting down for. Five fifty-two. the time remaining. The Kittrick high off the glass. Really got it out. Moscow took some punishment from Johnny Ruiz. Wilson gave it on to Mescal to the top of the left circle. Move it backwards. Mescal, some room. Shot. Knocked upstairs. I think he caught Seaman on the way in. Fans, the third member going into the Ring of Honor. He was the CEO and president of the Denver Whalers. All around great guy, Alan Friedman. Two nothing, Danbury in the lead. Sheehan going out. Lord at the circle, shot kicked wide. I don't think that ever got on McClendon. Carter, in the go. This is second game back for Sheehan. He took off to the SPHL after the Patrick game, December 27th. I'll flip this out. Sheehan went on alone to play for the Pensacola Ice Flyers, played 21 games up there. Got four points, one goal, and that shot caught the crossbar. Wicked shot by John Amantaditis. 33 seconds of power play, time left, Lord, shot blocked by McDonald. Carter, up to Lord. They're walking through the top of the circle, blocked by McDonald. Not quite out, 20 seconds left. 
Cross zone pass, knocked down. McDonald can't control the clear. Marshison will glide it in. Marshison shields it, goes down. No penalty whistled. Knocked back in by Borshev. Good stick work by the Hattricks to complete this penalty kill. And Ojik is out of the box and back into the game. Danbury one for one on the penalty kill and the Wolves' woes on the power play continue. McClendon will put the puck away. We get a little bit of extra discussion. Marsha said, <laughs> giving a little bit of a mess and annoyance. We'll take a breather. Come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena at the end of the first period on the Danbury Hatricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Quick word from our friends at Todd Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Danbury. Todd Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Danbury, is the premier automobile partner in the Danbury area. Located on Newtown Road, the Bennett family has been putting the community behind the wheel for over 35 years. Dream big, drive a Maserati or Alfa Romeo. New and pre-owned vehicles are available. Let Todd Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Danbury be your choice. Shot will find its way a little bit wide and worth noting a special thing about that. There is going to be a giveaway, they were giving away a car a, from Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo, a 2022 Alfa Romeo Giula. Go to one lucky fan, must be 18 years or older in order to qualify for it. Tax is not included, so go to the website, the danburyhattricks.com website, if you want your chance to win a brand shiny new 2022 Alfa Romeo, Giulia, courtesy of Todd Maserati, Alfa Romeo. Radcliffe spins, controls it, shot, bounces over Brendan Sheehan's stick. The net was yawning and begging to be scored on. Amontaditis fans on it. Ojik lays the lumber. Dowler off to Radcliffe, will pop it sky high. Stays in, caught the boards right on the ultimate limousine sign. Watertown is caught up in the shot counter. We're at eight apiece. Bennell with the takeaway. Bennell tried to center it, threw it on net, loose puck, and finally covered by Wisco. We'll stay on the air as the hat tricks will welcome a number of alums who will take to the ice sheet. Two thirty-three. The time remaining. Two goals to none for the hat tricks. Abdella looks to put it on net. It skips a little bit wide. His net's off. Tried to work this on. Couldn't control it. Coming up on the final two minutes of the first period. Kuznetsov will work it. A new counterweight sign. Shot stopped by McClendon. Couple of chances in front, and McClendon will cover it. Porshev put his stick on it to help his friend out. Abdella tied up with Chris Corrigan. Tempers have started to flare a little bit. Abdella and Corrigan are going to be sent into the penalty box. Two minutes, 12 seconds, the time remaining as we're gonna get some four on four skating. Abdella and Corrigan will be sitting down.
Here we go, puck won by Ruiz off the draw. Dowler. Behind Pamaleon, he'll look for some room. Pamaleon will ring it deep. Marchesson tried to get a stick on it. Marchesson holds it up for Pamaleon. Shot, got a piece of it, did Wisco. 30 seconds gone by. Abdella's penalty is roughing. Two minutes for roughing against Corgan as well, so matching roughing minors get us our four on four time. Robertson wanted to put it on net, didn't have the lane. Looks for the out. Knocked down by McKittrick. Giving them back to the left side, looking for some room forward. Sheehan will spring himself free, gets to the circle, pulls up, wants the shot, it's blocked. And we're down to the last minute. Penalties will expire about 12 seconds before the end of the frame. McKittrick and Sheehan couldn't control it. Carried on out by Samuel Rabchek. Hands off the blue line, Tian fumbles it. Donovan Tian gave it up. Sheehan and McKittrick forward with it. Sheehan plays it, McKittrick shot, save me. Rebound, almost goes in. McDonald couldn't finish it off. This will be cleared, knocked down by Pema Leon. 25 seconds left to go. All participants in alumni night, please report to the belly box. Please report to the belly box. Kuznetsov will handle this. Kuznetsov will look for it forward. Kuznetsov will just spin with it, and this will burn down the remainder of the time. We're back to four on, from, from four on four to five on five skating time. Final seconds burning off, settled down. They'll walk in, looks for the shot on net one more time, and that's that. Two nothing hat tricks at the end of the first. We'll keep it right here as the Danbury hat tricks will honor the alumni as we've got ourselves a nice little tie up in the corner here. These guys will get themselves separated and sorted out. Now the officials will break them up. We'll take a breather. We'll keep it right here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Alumni night on the way.
This guy, I mean, wow. He knows the trash business. He knows hockey. He knows movies. He's a movie star. Jim Gallanti. We're going to hear from the Ring of Honor inductees, but first, AJ Gallanti. Hey, thank you, everybody. I mean, each and every year, it just gets more humbling, this, this, uh, this culture that we've all built together. Uh, this line gets longer and longer. We need the second blue line next year. And uh, reminiscent, it feels like uh, 2004 with that body back there. And uh, love you guys, and congratulations to all the inductees. Thank you, Herm, and uh, thank you for keeping the uh, torch burning. He's the captain of the only championship team in this building, Eddie Campbell. Thank you guys for having me. You know, I'd like to thank uh, Herm, Larry, Coach Esposito. You know, this uh, Danbury holds a special place in my heart. Every time I think that when I was here, it was an uh, unbelievable time. Obviously, I first got here with Jimmy and AJ, great people. The city of Danbury has the best fans in any sports around. So I just want to thank you guys. Obviously, I want to thank my wife there and my family. But thank you guys and everybody here. So thank you guys. All right, here he is, Dave Figs. There, there is no Dan Barry Whalers without this guy. He made it happen. We got a banner on the wall. We had five great years, all because of him. Here Thank you, Herb. Thank you, Larry, for having the ownership group. Really appreciate it. Coach Esposito, you're the best. I want to thank the players, Coach Gerard. I just want to thank everyone. Thank you for Danbury. And uh, it's really a real privilege and an honor. Thank you. Hey, fans, that's the alumni night for 2023. Have a
relentless world, connected but alone, trapped by illusion. But there is another path where the battle to belong begins. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the block. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores!
It's a full night of action here at the Danbury Ice Arena and a full night of action around the FPHL. So the third period between Port Huron and Delaware, it's a 5-3 margin in favor of Port Huron. A good margin for them so far. Two goals apiece between Watertown, or sorry, between Motor City and Carolina. Game the second. This game, of course, sitting at two to nothing. Binghamton leading Elmira two to one, and Columbus leads Mississippi two to nothing. This one of the later games on the schedule. The Port Huron and Carolina games both started at 6.05. So again, this is one of the later games starting of the day and across the FPHL. Danbury in the home black jerseys with the Whalers inspired logo at the center of the jersey. Going from right to left across your internet waves. And it's a clean draw win for the Wolves. We're in the whites going the opposite direction. And worth noting, Kyle Gonzalez took a penalty at the very end of the period. Walks into the slot, shot kicked aside. So for the second time tonight, the hat tricks are shorthanded and are required to kill off a penalty. Moscow will play this to the left spot. Shot on, kicked away. Again, Watertown is the weakest power play in the FPHL at only about 14%. And Danbury will get a clear, find its way down to Wisco's net. Kyle Gonzalez took a roughing penalty. The puck turned over, it took a terrible bounce from Wisco's perspective. Ojek had it for a moment, had it taken away. Siemens stick cracks in half. Dowler will clear it. Wisco has to hop out of his net to settle it. Ojik crashing in. He'll play it to Lord. Abdella on the loose puck. He'll take it in for a walk in the offensive end. Has to get back. Play it for Dowler. Dan very happy to play a bit of an elongated version of keep away. Pascal looking for it. Sheehan will settle it. It's a two on two offensive chance. Sheehan. Get a shot on Ojik in front as well. Wisco with the stop. Here comes Muscal across the blue line. He'll cut it to the half boards, pull up, and sauce it across for Carter. Lord. Tip. Final nine seconds of the power play burning off. And that is going to be that. The hat tricks are two for two on the power play, but the Wolves score anyway. Moscow finds Don Carter Jr. mere seconds after the penalty expires, and the Wolves have gotten themselves on the board two minutes and four seconds in. It's a 2-1 score. That's Carter's sixth goal of the season, fifth as a member of the Wolves. This is Muscal setting it up, and just a good feed from Parker Muscal. His 68th point this season. It'll be his 14th assist since coming over to the Watertown Wolves. His 26th point started off this season with the Elmira Mammoth and piled up 42 points. On the southern tier of New York, he moved to the North Country, and he has continued his blistering offensive pace. Again, he's up to 68 points in 40 games played. Across, chance, shot, save, made, rebound. Oh, how did Johnny Ruiz not score that? The net was yawning, and he was denied. Wow. Danbury has almost an immediate chance 
to get their multi-goal lead back, and it just goes sideways. The scoring again is very simple. Mescal with the assist, and Carter Jr. with the goal. Both of those guys coming over from other teams. This will find its way down to the Danbury end of the rink. McDonald and grab it, use the net as a shield, and look for some place to go with it. The thought at the start of the season is that the Wolves would be playing a more tight-checking defensive sort of game for much of their season. Kuznetsov sprung in. Bunnell will get to the loose puck at the half boards. Leaves it. Borshev spins, wants the pass. Looks free. Kuznetsov will have to fish this out. Bunnell has worked off the puck. Moscow will take this out. Bring it deep. Gonzalez will hold it. Pass off the glass in and out of Bunnell's glove. Knocked down. Gonzalez can't control it. It's not a power play goal that the Wolves got, but it's as close as you can get without it being one. Borshev and Carter wrestling away from the puck in the neutral zone when the puck was behind Frankie McClendon's net. Kuznetsov tries to get this out. He needs some help. Gonzalez is there to provide it. Wolves are going to get some offensive zone time. Carter stapled in. That trick's trying to get the clear. Borshev around for Gonzalez. This group of players has been on the ice for a while. Baker will lob it off the glass. Bunnell looking for a chance to hop out, and he will. Ojek on. Kuznetsov will gather it. He has to wait. Sheehan was off sides. Now he's there. He'll chip it high and give it chase. Sheehan. Picks off the clearing attempt, up to the point. Ratcliffe there for it. The New Zealander will control it, bring it around for Sheehan. Had to flip it for Ojik, the Quebec man. Amontaditis got it through the outstretched stick of Ratcliffe. Chance for the Wolves. Krabcek tried to throw it to the slot, got knocked down by Zach Pamaleon. Ratcliffe fumbles it. I look for it across. Sheehan settles. Through some contact. Ojik. We'll grab it. Flip it. Sheehan will look for a place to set it up. Dowler has to pinch. Ratcliffe settles it. Tried to backhand it through to Ojik at the goal line. Couldn't get it there. Long sequence of play as Amontadidas will come up. Fire it on net. And Frankie McClendon will swallow it up. First media timeout of the frame here on the Danbury Hatrix. minutes gone by here at the Danbury Ice Arena here in the second period. Watertown has gotten a goal back. There's Herm Sorcher, MC, Master of Ceremonies here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Word from our friends at Texas Roadhouse. As the hat tricks will try and get their way out to their own defensive end of the rink. They'll flip it on. McKittrick has some room to work with. Given across for Ruiz. These two have combined for a lot of points lately. Gotten one tonight. This is going to be iced. McDonald, the first man back for it. So, offensive zone face off for Danbury. Tino 
12.05 the time left to go in the second. Don Carter Jr. has the lone goal for the Wolves in the period and the game to this point. Point shot, looking to try and sneak it through. It's still loose. Bounces to the boards. They can't clear it. Marsha Son will gather it. And work his way through. Marsha Son sneaks his way free. Emily on. We'll ring it for McKittrick. Holds it against the apron. Looks for somewhere to go with it. Dowler holds it. Dowler will put it low. Takes a bad bounce from the hat trick perspective. High off the glass. Dowler stands his ground. Tried to work it on for Tian. Sneaks underneath Pamaleon. Watertown's got a chance, and they miss the shot. Trevor Lord snuck behind and sailed the shot a little too high. Long pass ahead wanted for Dmitry Kuznetsov. Can't connect. Amontaditis can't control it. Pamaleon takes a tumble. Amesbury, puck on his stick. Bounces to Pamaleon. Dowler. Who's nets off to Borshev. Borshev tried to flip it to the top of the crease. Rabchek will get this out. And Montaditis will help him. Two on one opportunity. Glides in at the circle. Wanted a cross for Montaditis and a good breakup by Xavier Abdella. Abdella around for Gonzalez, high and off the glass. They're going to say that came out and caught the metal railing at the front of the 200 section. So we'll have a neutral zone face off. We've got a player limping off the ice, a wolf. Not looking 100%, it's John Amantiditis. Came off the ice a bit gingerly. Watertown skating short-handed tonight. The 16 guys, and that includes both goaltenders, playing in this game for the Wolves, so. They are begging and praying that everybody stays healthy throughout the course of this. Amesbury's gonna head off. Sheehan wins the draw. Off a little bit backwards, cleared up to Radcliffe. to will try and spring his way free, lob it on. 12.22 left to go, Ojek tries to kick it off the stick of Payne. Payne will take it over the middle to Horn. Lobs in, shot into McClendon's mitt. Will make a simple glove hand save. Not allowed to do that. We've got the Kuster group. Also, J.J. Stacks is in the building here. J.J. Stacks. And the Adams group. The Adams group is here. Also, happy birthday 12, to the internet go. superstar, YouTube sensation, Ronnie Rogo McDonald will try and clear it. Wilson can't get it through McDonald. Robertson. Waits for it, pass headlong for Sheehan. Sheehan, backhand shot, sailed it over the crossbar. It kicks away from Robertson. McDonald, up to the left, caught the official on the skate. Radcliffe will just have to play it backwards. Ojik will kick and settle it. 11.35 to play, Ojik with the check. Song with one as well. It's a kind of broken line for Danbury. They'll complete it with Kittrick jumping on. Sheehan's still out as well. Try to throw it in front. McKittrick will flip this up with empty space. Gonzalez sprints ahead. That puck's behind him, so Danbury has to hop back on sides. Moscow already set up one goal. Drops for Wilson. Shot save made. Rebound on McClendon, and he'll cover it. Parker Muscal, the most dangerous man on the ice for the Watertown Wolves, has created a number of brilliant offensive chances already. Hey, this alumni night. Hockey doesn't happen if it wasn't for West Coast hockey in Brookfield. Special up from Doug Matthews is in the building tonight. Doug Matthews. Draw 
draws down Pamelaon on the puck. Off the glass, Marchessault catches it. Looks for the outlet. Up for Johnny Ruiz. Trying to create some space. Marchessault will keep it moving. Shot caught. Wisco on the way into the protective netting up top. He's the host of the Hat Trick City Podcast. He's written for National Dueling with Don Carter, two of the goal scorers. Pamelaon looks for the shot, saw it all the way, did Wisco. Ruiz having a chat, maybe asking Wisco something to the effect of, how did you see that? Stop at the TP corner. That's right, you can get there. He expected to have Billy McCreary, the head coach of the Danbury Hatricks, hopping upstairs during the second intermission. Emelion will look for the shot on net. It's kicked. Dowler will retreat. Wants it forward for Ruiz. We'll just backhand it into the attacking end. Marshall Son with the check. McKittrick with some room. Drags tried the shot. He caught it on the heel of the stick. Up to the point, Dowler. Didn't think he was going to be able to get to it. Settled by Kane. Who's net saw. He'll spin it. Borshev will fling it on net. Wisco catches it and hands it off. Floated to the red line. Riley Robertson, a very large defenseman from Port Elgin, Ontario. It's six foot six inches tall. Loose puck up for Gordy Bennell. Glide it on. Bennell tries to drag through a defender, gets upended. Matrix will keep it moving. Who's nets off with the pickoff? He'll turn it at the circle shot over the crossbar. Bennell spins. Who's nets off shot? Save made by Wisco. We'll come to the under 10 media timeout here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. Well, J.J. Stacks in Brookfield features burgers, wings, shakes, ice cream, and mini golf. Check out the menu and spoil yourself. Take a trip down Federal Road and stack it. 9.29 to go. Shots are 21 to 12 in favor of the hat tricks. Tied up, Wilson spinning at the circle. Wilson will play this out. It's whacked at by Lord. Tried to flip it to Xavier Abdella. Offensive pace has cooled a bit. Oja tried to go running downhill. Settled at the blue line by Lord. He'll take it and spin it. Oja trying to pick Lord's pocket and does. Ratcliffe. Sheehan waits in front. Oja sweep it around. Plays it to the point for Gonzalez. Winds up for the shot. Save made. Abdella will ring it around. Wanted to flip it on. Ojik with the takeaway. Sheehan holds it. Radcliffe. These guys have gotten pretty well together. Sheehan. Dowler winds up, looks for the shot. It kicks wide. Caught Lincoln Gingrich on the way in. Marcheson 
Ovid left it. Three on two chance. Springing ahead was Rabchek. Winds up Carter, shot blocked. Another chance, flutters high and settles at the faceoff circle. McKittrick will run it forward. McKittrick overran it, lost it. Tien will flip it to the opposite dot. McDonald denies the attempt. Marsha Son. Cross wanted Ruiz, he caught him in the skate. On net, bad angle shot, McKittrick with the follow-up. Amantaditis and McKittrick talking, Ruiz getting in the middle of it. Well, Marsha Son separating and having a discussion with Don Carter Jr. The officials are going to just break it up. Kittrick having an elongated talk with John Amantaditis. Both teams are going to swap their lines in full. Danbury with both of their goals in the first period. Watertown has theirs in the second. And very early on in the second, we have gone over 10 minutes since the Wolves' goal. Bunnell has to spring it. Bunnell, oh, worked off of his stick. Otherwise, he had a great looking chance. Through Kuznetsov, Borshev spun down. McGuire will take it away. Wilson, glide it. Wilson, do some traffic. Robertson, couldn't get it out. Shot sailed a little bit wide of McClendon in net. Ford will bring it around. Over McClendon's glove. Watertown starting to get some offensive looks. McGuire played it to the left. Wants it forward. Stick lifted by Gordy Bennell. A lot of little things. He tried to dive for it and couldn't connect. That's an icing. The Danbury junior hat tricks of the NA3HL will be going on the ice in Jersey. Their season just came to a conclusion. They'll be going on at the start of the second intermission ahead of all of the other on-ice festivities. McDonald waits for it. Borshev looks for the outlet. Robertson around for McDonald. Borshev will gather it and go. His nets off trailing behind him, receives the pass. Wants for the shot across for Robertson, trying to fill the back door. And just didn't quite connect at exactly the right idea. His nets off. He'll leave it for Gonzalez to pick off. Gonzalez will gain it. Shot. Sent wide. Amesbury with the blast. Stopped. Amesbury has a wicked cannon of a shot. He should use it more frequently. Amesbury across for Ojek. Shot, he completely fanned on it. Amesbury gets underneath his man. We've got a whistle. It's a high sticking call. And who is this going against? Amesbury is having words with Seaman. And the officials are just gonna tell him to head off. Daniel Amesbury will sit down for a two-minute high-sticking minor. And with that, Daniel Amesbury has cleared the 1,000 career penalty minutes in his professional hockey career. A two-minute high-sticking minor. Amesbury noted himself on his own feed on his own social medias that <laughs> that he had been sitting on 999 this morning. So I have that information thanks expressly to his publicly provided information. Watertown 0 for on the power play so far tonight. Looking to try and get the equalizer on the man advantage. 540 the time to go. Off to the left. Catches the side of the net. Moscow holds it. 
Looks for the shot. McClendon will knock it down. McKendrick will clear it. Wisco settles and looks for a pass. They'll have Corgan over the middle. Corgan forward, lobbed high. McDonald, the puck will kick off that corner spot on the boards, which has created a number of bizarre bounces. Here comes Johnny Ruiz. One on one against Wilson. Tries to get the drag through, and he lost the handle. And we've got a situation in front of the Watertown bench. We've got punches flying. We've got it going. Seaman throwing haymakers. Oh boy, if you wanted some physicality, we've got it here tonight. This completely separate from the play that Johnny Ruiz was trying to make the offensive end. McDonald got in it. So McDonald heading off, Seaman out as well. Probably five minute fighting penalties for the two of them. So they will have their penalties conclude with one second left. Hey, fans, at the end of the second period, we're going to be bringing out the A3 Danbury Junior Hattricks. We know a lot of them are going to the fantastic season. Also, one of the battles, we, we shorted the guy a little bit. We didn't have enough time, but they beat Merrill. He started in 1987 as a Ranger. So 5-0-1, the time left to go. Spent some time in the American Hockey League with the Utica Devils, then the Johnstown Chiefs in the East Coast League. So we've he got multiple guys sitting in the box. There may well be another penalty assessed in addition to the fight. Away from the play, this is how the entire penalty started. This is how the power play started out as they were able to ring that puck a bit forward. Two goals to one the score. The officials discussing what exactly they're going to rule these penalties as. They've thrown a two-minute minor penalty up on the board for Dakota Seaman. Amesbury is barking across the penalty box. So it looks like we're going to have 15, we're going to have a minute and three seconds worth of four-on-four four skating. At least that's what it looks like. We'll take a quick pause for just a moment here on the Danbury Ice Arenas, here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. In a relentless world, connected but alone, trapped by illusion. But there is another path where the battle to belong begins. So the officials now coming over to explain to the coaching staffs what the rulings are. They've put a two minute minor penalty up on the board for Dakota Seaman. Amesbury was already in the penalty box for a high sticking infraction. Chris Corgan is coming out to the Watertown bench. Ruiz still talking. It looks like we're gonna have some four on four time. We are here from Iowa, the International Real Estate Management Professional Group. They are here.
Gingrich is going to come out and serve some of that time. He's going to serve the five-minute fighting major, it looks like. Corgan is heading out, unless there's another misconduct penalty on top of it. Borshev on the dot. So we have our four-on-four -four time for the next 55 seconds. And yep, it's a five-minute fighting major. Also an instigating penalty going against Dakota Seaman is the minor penalty. Or Shev will hold it. The Hattricks will get an abbreviated power play. We're coming up on less than five minutes to go. His net's off tied up. A couple of sticks coming up high on Don Carter. Up the wing. Only 15 seconds more of this kind of skating. Hamaleon takes the check. We've got a whistle. This will be an icing call, I believe, against the Wolves. And that'll give us our full media time out here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Quick pause back in a moment here on the Danbury Hatchers YouTube channel. from our friends at the Holiday Diner. They were closed for a bit for some serious renovations, but our friends at the Holiday Diner are up and running again. You want the best milkshake you ever had, and you want to taste greatness, well, hit the Holiday Diner on White Street and feast off their menu. It's breakfast, lunch, and dinner with George and the crew. Again, they were closed for a while for renovations. I got to go there with Patrick Renette and Calvin Savoyan. They make great milkshakes at the Holiday Diner. Cookies and cream was my choice. Ojik having a chat. We're coming over to the scorer's table to have a chat about something or other. Not sure what the officials could be discussing right now. But it is something. They'll play on. Ruiz will gather it out to Gonzalez. Bounces on his stick. Ruiz just tried to play it cleanly. Ojek. Hat tricks are on the power play. Amesbury out of the box at over a thousand penalty minutes. Across wanted Marcia Sand. They couldn't feed it through. Not cleanly anyway. McKittrick will keep it. Glides through. Ruiz wanted to kick it back to McKittrick, who now has it. 40 seconds on the man advantage still to go. Danbury, third worst power play in the league, 16%. A lot of the season it was about 12, so they have been improving on it kind of lately. Ruiz, 25 to work with. Ruiz will hold it, take it for a walk, shoot it. Stopped by Wisco. Marcia and Gonzalez will control it. Kittrick, pocket picked by Lord. They'll keep it in. Marcia Son, eight seconds to work with. Not a full power play, so this will wind its way down. Bounces to Gonzalez. Marcia Son and Ruiz both there for it. Ruiz. He'll hold it. Put this on. McKittrick glides in. McKittrick will look for it. Kicks its way wide, 2.35 the time remaining. In the second period, Watertown has one goal here in the frame. Danbury, one as well, with two of theirs coming in the first. McGuire tries to clear it, Kuznetsov's there for it, shot on, kicks it wide. Long sequences of play as Dowler 
will knock down the advance. Igor Borshev gives and goes with Gordy Vanell. Didn't have the room. Dowler tries to work him off. Bounces across the blue line, gathered by McGuire. Looks for the play on net. McClendon with the save. Holds it. Benell has to cut it. Kuznetsov on the loose puck. Works up the boards. A minute 40 left. Borshev called for it. Kuznetsov will hold it. Puts the shot directly in Adam Wisko's gut. A minute 34 to go in the second. Daniel Amesbury cleared the 1,000 penalty minute mark, and he's being honored for it in the Danbury Arena. Abdella wants to put it on net. Couldn't quite play it cleanly, did Wisco initially, but puts his mitt on it. Ojik on the dot. Abdella wants Radcliffe, he's got him. Cliff, the New Zealander. Uh, Montaditis will pick his pocket. Lord cheating down and sneaks free. This is going to be an icing call. The Wolves bench is incensed by this call. Watertown arguing furiously that that should not be an icing. They're going to debate about this. If it's an incorrect or inadvertently called icing, then that would result in a center ice face-off. And it looks like that's how they're lining up. So Sheehan and Wilson will take the face-off at center. Robertson, forward for Sheehan. Tries to spring himself free for some space. Abdella wants it forward. She and Ojik there as well. We'll give it backwards for Robertson. Had a couple of good offensive chances earlier on in the game. Unrewarded. Unrequited goal chances. Ojek with a huge hit. Crunches Samuel Rabchak. Adela will give it across. Robertson try to float it for Ojek. 30 seconds left. Ratcliffe across the blue line. Sheehan spinning with it. Ojek wants to get on top of it. Up to Zach Pamaleon. A wind up for Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe with the shot, will kick it wide. Gonzalez, no room for it. Carter will hold it. Final 10 seconds. Not sure Watertown will be able to get a shot away. That is that, as that'll sail high. And now they'll call an icing that ultimately is gonna be ruled correctly. 4.4 .4 to go. We'll keep it here as the period comes to a conclusion. The NA3HL Danbury Junior Hattricks will come onto the ice for their thanks and congratulations. Uh, we'll keep it here for you. As that comes to its conclusion, we get continued discussions. They're making sure that Carter comes back out onto the ice. Just making sure that they have the right players on after the icing call. 4.4 to go. Ruiz will take the face off against Carter. If you want a shot quickly if you're the hat trick, you have to get it fast. Ruiz tries to control it, wanted to put on net. No time, that's it. 2-1 the score at the end of the second period. Watertown gets one back. We're still 20 minutes away from deciding this one. We'll take a breather. We'll keep it right here for the intermission time between the hat tricks and wolves. Quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena.
I think, you know, the Danbury Ice Arena is home to some fantastic hockey teams. And uh, you know the pro game, which you're here right now. But there's also two junior teams. These are youngsters who are 16 to 20 years old, and they are trying to get college scholarships. They are trying to really uh, use hockey to further their academics and opportunities. They just completed a great season. They finished in second place. They won a playoff round, and they are an absolutely outstanding group of young men. We're going to bring them out individually, and then we're going to have the captain speak. So Chris Lynch will take you through the intros. All right, let's meet the NA3HL Danbury Junior hat tricks, starting with number four, Cooper Bencourt. The alternate captains with the letterers, Reese Tambor. <laughs> Number 13 forward, Jack Cloak. A Danbury native forward. Number 18, Kaden Sturdivant. Forward who fought through a lot this year. Number 12, Robert Moore Tupi. <laughs> Sandy Hood, Connecticut native forward.
This side of the other side. Now look, hey fans, it is time for TK's American Cafe Shootout. And we are going to attempt to give away five free chicken wings to every fan in the building tonight. Now, TK's American Cafe located on White Street in Danbury. Fantastic place for wings. Great place to watch sports. Baseball is coming up. Are there any Boston Red Sox fans in the building tonight? Any New York Mets fans in the building tonight? Any New York Yankee fans? All right, well look, I'll tell you what. We're gonna put it on the local kid here. We're gonna put it on the young Granaker. He is a Kenny, Kenny Granaker. Here we go, Kenny. You put a puck in the net. Everybody win. Oh, all right, we need a ready. All right, people, you're the captain. Fans, it's, it's on the captain. We're going to give him one shot. If he puts it in, everybody wins five wings from TK's. How does that sound? Do you think?
The intermission coming to a conclusion here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Let's take a quick look around the happenings and goings on and the other scores in the FPHL. And again, this game got started a little bit later than many of the others, so we should be getting some finals. And indeed, Port Huron Prowlers have defeated the Delaware Thunder 8-3. to three. Only that final, the Motor City Rockers up on the Carolina Thunderbirds 4-2. That looks like a final. Maybe just hasn't been made official, but I'm going to presume that that is a final at the end of the rope for the Thunderbirds. So 4-2, Motor City gets a good and needed win for them. We're late on in the third period, and Binghamton is seconds away from closing a win against the Elmira Mammoth. This game, of course, 2-1 to one before we head into the third and final period of regulation. And the Columbus River Dragons, what looks to be the end of the second period, lead the Mississippi Sea Wolves 3-0 at the Columbus Civic Center. Again, a reminder as to how we got here in the Danbury Ice Arena. Danbury with two goals in the first period. Tobias Ojek doing the honors for the opener and Johnny Ruiz with the as of yet go-ahead goal. Parker Moscow with a very nice play to set up Don Carter Jr. for the lone Watertown goal that has them on the board to this point. And still plenty left to be said as we await the happenings and goings on of the third period. Two thirty of intermission time still to go. We want to give you a heads up, fans, that the Danbury Hattricks have some marvelous opportunities upcoming to engage with the team and enjoy yourselves here at the Danbury Ice Arena. For one, the Hattricks will be partnering with Todd Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Danbury, and will be giving away a 2022 Alfa Romeo Giula. You have to enter in order to take part in that. Go to danburyhattricks.com slash win a new car to have your chance at claiming your brand new 2024, or excuse me, 2022 Alfa Romeo Giula, a beautiful rig. We're incredibly, incredibly grateful. It'll be on March 25th at 7 p.m. And again, the link for that, if you want to take part, is danburyhattricks.com slash win a new car if you want to enter for it. A little down through a nice good long process of competitions and then we will give away the winner on that Saturday night. And then that next night, Sunday the 26th, our lone Sunday game of the entire season, we will be opening up the ice and having the opportunity to skate with the hat tricks. So come out, enjoy a game, and skate with the Danbury hat tricks after the Sunday game against the Delaware Thunder concludes. Yes, next weekend is a three games in three days. It's the only Friday, Saturday, Sunday home weekend of the season. We are coming right on down to the end of the season here at the Danbury Ice Arena. We're showing some highlights from some of the past teams on the video board here at the Danbury Ice Arena. They'll be at home against the Mississippi Sea Wolves for two games next week. The 24th, the Friday, and 25th, the Saturday. They'll host Delaware the next two after it on Sunday, March 26th, and Friday, March 31st. And they open April going to Elmira for the front end of a three-game series where the next two would be here in Danbury. They're showing Jim and A.J. Galante up on the scoreboard, enjoying themselves in the suites. The originators of hockey, professional hockey in the city of Danbury, Connecticut. 
There is an enormous amount of gratitude to be made towards them as Radcliffe will put the shot on net. Puck will bounce its way into the corner, settled and sneaks underneath Radcliffe's stick. Off the glass, pings down to the left side. McDonald try and bounce this up. McDonald wanted to settle it. Watertown looking to even the game. Gian will give it around to his defense. Donald forward. Radcliffe over the middle of the New Zealand man. Canterbury. Plays his check. Buck ran away from him. Already 50 seconds gone by. Tipped and flown into the protective netting from neutral ice. So this will be a neutral zone faceoff. Yep, it'll be a center ice draw. The official's coming over to the scorer's box to ask a question or talk to them about some scoring. Also, it's worth noting that a secondary assist has been added to Watertown's goal. The assist added to Trevor Lord. So Lord gets an assist for his work on the Moscow setup and Carter finished goal. For Lord, that's his 15th assist of the season. He's played 43 games. This puck skies into the seats. Only a little bit below our perch upstairs, a little bit higher, and we would have been the ones ducking for cover. Offensive zone faceoff for the Wolves. Wilson will win it cleanly. Baker keeps it on the blue line. Dowler tries to get this one out and couldn't. McKittrick will hold it. Gave it on to Zach Pamela on. The wing. Louise tried to settle it. Wilson. At the circle. Give, go. McClendon with a stick save and worked out of. Danger by Pamela on an excellent, excellent save by Frankie McClendon. Came into tonight's matchup, a 9-13 save percentage in 10 games played. And pretty recently put up one of his very, very best performances in net in Watertown. Danbury had played a number of their road games in Watertown as they'll put it up top. Shot, save made. Diving out to get on top of it was Wisco. And it'll be settled and covered. On March 4th, actually no, not against Watertown in Elmira. Sunday game on March 4th. McClendon put up a 42 save, brilliant goaltending performance and got the win in the shootout. Stopped all 10 of the shootout shots that he faced. Got the hat tricks a win. Danbury the first team in the FPHL to 100 points plus. And as a result of their win last night in Elmira, or pardon me, in Watertown, Came into tonight's game 35, six and five for 102 points, first in the league. Columbus, second place in the FPHL overall. Rabchek lobs it on, it sneaks across the open goal crease. Xavier Abdella looking for a release valve. Ratcliffe couldn't do much with it. Settles at the red line, tried to make some play with it. Rabchek will hold it and go. Gets to the circle, blows by, shot saved by McClendon. The puck will trickle free. Radcliffe will lob it for Tobias Ojik. He's got a goal already, looking for another one. Shoots it on net, save made, and Wisco dives on it. 
a very staccato feeling third period. Only a couple of points where it really has felt like there's been kind of high danger or high volume shot looks. There are opportunities for that to become the case. About three minutes gone by. Shots listed on the board as 27 to 15 in Danbury's favor. It's been a really good goaltending performance for Adam Wisco. 25 stops. Oja controls it at the top of the circle. He'll work it low. Sheehan waits for it. Radcliffe tried to control it. It'll roll up to Zach Pamelan at the point. He'll be knocked out over the glass end into the stands. Well, the Danbury hockey fans getting some souvenirs. Official game pucks are pretty nice, I would say. Danbury's got a busy home weekend upcoming. They will be right back here next weekend for three home games. First two against Mississippi on Friday and Saturday. Thrown to the slot. Carried out from the circle by Parker Muscal. Long pass for Lord off the board. Dollar will take it away. Amesbury tried to work this on. McClendon will leave it. Pamela on. Will hold it and look. Pamela on. Up for Daniel Amesbury. And work it on to the offensive end. Flip left by Teon. Donald waves at it. Up ends Elijah Wilson. Bounces to the slot. Ratcliffe, some room. The third of those games they're playing next weekend will be against the Delaware Thunder. And after that game will be the opportunity to skate with the Danbury Hattricks. Immediately following that game against the Delaware Thunder. You'd like your opportunity to take to the ice. There's a chance. Shot stopped by McClendon. A brilliant stop to blow it dead on Timothy Payne's attack. One of McClendon's very best saves of the season. Amesbury now goes over to have a chat with Seaman. They'll drop the mitts, and here we go! Amesbury takes him down and brings the arena to its feet! Seaman and Amesbury had been joining all night. They'll head off to raucous applause. The boisterous fans of section 102 enjoying it. Carter and Abdella shoving as well. This is how it started. The two just looking, wanted to go. They finally dropped their mitts. A couple of flurries by Seaman, lost his balance, and Amesbury with the takedown. Amesbury heading off. Waves to the fans. Imploring for noise. They are giving him what he wants. <laughs> Two won the score. Watertown. Trying to get some response. Seaman banging on the glass just now. Ruiz talking to the officials. You never know what you're gonna see when you come to the Danbury Arena. 
There'll be some good hockey. There'll be some physicality. There'll be some good stories to tell everyone. Ruiz and Wilson are gonna step on the dot. There's no power play resulting from this. Just a good old fashioned hockey fight. Moscow with the takeaway, glides in. Gonzalez back in defense. Moscow the shot, McClendon the stop. Another chance on net, almost trickles through Abdella. Bails out McClendon, a wicked, wicked bounce that almost snuck across the goal line. Abdella saving the hat tricks, bacon on that. Louise Stick comes out of his hands. This will be a slashing call against the Wolves. 15-15, the time remaining in the third. Yes, we have not even played five minutes of this third period. It's taken its sweet time. Danbury 0 for on the man advantage. They had an abbreviated one towards the end of the second period. They'll get a full one here as Ojik will bring it across for Gonzalez. Ojik holds it. Wilson almost cleared it over the blue line. It popped upstairs instead. Out in front. Oh, couldn't control it. Did the net come off its moorings? They blew the play dead. The officials aren't signaling a penalty. And yes, the net did just come off its moorings. So we're 14 seconds gone in the power play for the hat tricks. Ruiz will set up on the dot to take it again against Wilson. Finally ready to drop the puck. Ruiz wins it. Ojek will look for the seeing I shot. It sails wide. Kittrick, get a two-minute slashing penalty is what has us here. Kittrick up to Ruiz, circles shot, save made by Wisco. Pitch forked out, Gonzalez back up to the blue line for Ruiz. He'll walk back in and set up shop again. Takes the check, Gonzalez couldn't knock it down and hit the official at the red line, Ojek. Offsides, Daniel McKittrick not fast enough getting across the blue line. And that finally, after all of that, brings us to our first media timeout of the third period. Quick pause back in a moment from the Dan Ice Arena. our friends at DPS Printing Solutions. Diversified Printing Solutions. In Danbury is the Hattrick's official printing partner. You want it printed? Well, call Tina and let them get it inked up for you. DPS Printing Solutions. They can do it all. Locally owned, printed on paper from Connecticut trees. Sheehan will get to the loose puck. Across to Dmitry Kuznetsov, he'll hold it, look for the shot, and it goes directly into Wisco's mitt. We have 55 seconds left to go on the power play for the Watertown Wolves. 14 minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the third period. Also, he drove the longest distance, number 71, Carlo Ricci, all the way from Montreal. Face-off win up to McDonald, who set up the first goal. Sheehan. We'll work it up to Kuznetsov. McDonald winds up, wants the shot, and it goes directly into the awaiting gut of Adam Wisco. <laughs> 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 
Sheehan and Carter waiting. They finally get to drop it. Almost cleared, caught a part of the stanchion at the one of the doors onto the ice. Bounces straight down, we've got 30 seconds left. Donald up the middle, Benell. Bounces to Sheehan and flipped on. McClendon had it in his mitt for a bit, didn't have the whistle called, so Ratcliffe will walk this out. 10 seconds left on the power play. Who's nets off, picked off by Wilson. Carter in front, backhanded the shot over the net. A great shorthanded chance, and as soon as Watertown gets out of the penalty box, they take another infraction immediately. Six on five skating right now with McClendon on the bench. Ruiz, the blast, settled by McDonald. Hattrick skating six on five. Watertown will get the touch. Don Carter will be heading off for a two minute penalty. Not sure if that was for a cross check. Yep, it's a cross checking penalty. Couple of the vocal and Wonderful Hattrix fans who to win some money from the 50-50 raffle, I believe. Nicely done. Added by our Danbury Hattrix Booster Club. We're grateful for all of their support. Johnny Ruiz on the dot. He'll win the draw. Danbury missed out on their first power play chance of the period. They'll look for another one here. Gonzalez. Gave it off for Ruiz. Long pass ahead. Wanted in front for McKittrick and knocked it upstairs. This has been a pretty quiet offensive game, all things considered. Only three goals, so far none in the period. Ojek. Pops the face off sky high, McKittrick goes down. Ruiz will knock it free, Gonzalez given over to Tobias Ojek. Gains the blue line, tries to drag through, shot on, save made. Gonzalez will walk it to the left, give it off for Ojek. Gonzalez, Ruiz calling for it at the face off dot, SCORES! Sean Chirp in the Watertown bench. And goes through the handshake line at the bench of his own team. You'll see it again here. Ojik with the pass over to Gonzalez, and then just a seeing eye shot tipped by Marchesson. He got an assist earlier on in the game, so he's up to 42 points, and now 42 games played. A point of game player almost had another one here. Gordy Benell almost had it. Kuznetsov will work it to the point for Zach Pamaleon. Can't keep it in the attacking end. Here come the Wolves. Puck just rolls away from Chris Corrigan before he's able to do much with it. Bounces on Baker's stick, and then rolls the goal line extended. 11.35, the time remaining. Ojik tries to poke it free, worked on net and stopped by Wisco. Ravchik couldn't get it up beyond Robertson. Too far for Kuznetsov to connect with it. Ravchik holds and moves it across. Brandon Baker, play it forward. This is gonna turn into icing. Three goals to one. And special shout out to co-host of the Hatchet City Podcast, Hatchet Burnett in the building today. The scoring is as follows. Marsh is on the goal. 
Gonzalez the assist, and Ojek the secondary assist. Ojek with a two-point game tonight. Marchesson as well. Didn't know where it was. Radcliffe will flip it to the board. Sheehan sprinting. Gets and through Tian. It's an offsides call. Looks for the shot on Net McDonald. Didn't quite have the look. Sheehan. Try and work it free. Didn't have it. Radcliffe. Not there. Coming up on 10 minutes remaining, a two goal advantage for the hat tricks. Ruiz skies for it, couldn't quite control it. Wilson walks in, poked off the stick by Gonzalez. Trying to work this out. The Kittrick took a swing at the puck. Didn't field it. Abcheck blows by, got it to the circle, put it on his backhander. Almost to the circle, not there, Pamela on. Tried to knock it down, grab check. Dips it to Carter. He's got the lone Watertown goal tonight. Carter spins, Baker fills the space at the circle. Locker save made by McClendon. We're at the under 10 media timeout. Quick breather back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. In a relentless world, connected but alone, trapped by illusion. But there is another path where the battle to belong begins. from our friends at Hartsburg Chiropractic. Matt Hartsburg, Dr. Matt Hartsburg, is an official member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard. Check out Hartsburg Chiropractic and get on the road to a healthy hockey season. Dmitry Kuznetsov breaks in and alone shot. The defense caught up to him, Lincoln Gingrich. At the speed, Gordy Bunnell tried to work this on. That's off tying him up. Blown for McDonald. Whistle sounds. Gonzalez pointing out where the play should be. Face off in the Watertown end of the rink. Sheehan with the tie up. He'll win the face off to the point for Abdella. Worked on for Ojik, caught the official in the skate. Falling down, works it to Gonzalez. Winds up, wants the shot, tipped. Ojik just sends it a little bit wide. This is gonna turn into icing as Gonzalez sprints back to play it. Offensive zone face off again for Danbury. 
Worth reiterating the upcoming schedule, the Danbury Hat Tricks will be home next weekend for three games, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They'll be playing all three of their games against the uh, first two against the water uh, against the uh, Mississippi Sea Wolves and the third one against the Delaware Thunder. Point shot on, the save made. 7.30 Friday, 7 p.m. Saturday, and 3 p.m. Sunday. It's our lone Sunday game of the season. Brendan Dowler with the wicked wrister. go through the line. A wicked, wicked game. Dowler with an incredible shot. I don't think it got tipped on its way in. We'll see it again. Spinning with it against the boards. Dowler just steps in and caught it off the right post. An incredible shot. 4-1, hat tricks in the lead. Puck is free, McKittrick diving in. Blows over the line, got to the circle, shot stopped by McClendon. McKittrick wanted it up for Marchesson. Pamelaon, sit with it, throws his check. Pamelaon and Ruiz. Jostling against three wolves. Don Carter will take it. Over the crossbar and off the door that the hat tricks come in on. Dowler lays the lumber. Carter with another check. Ruiz will work it out. An incredibly powerful offensive game. Tobias Ojek gets an assist, his third point of the night. Two assists for the Kitagan Zibi, Quebec native. He's had a hard year. It's very good to see him performing so well for this team and welcomed back into the fold so effectively. Three points for Ojek. He's up to 12 points in 12 games at well over a goal, a point per game pace. Fennell tried to drag through his man. Fennell's still knocking some of the rust off, but for the most part, he looks like he hadn't missed that much. Seaman, the shot stopped by McClendon. Second shot, not there. Maybe up to 21 shots. Another stop, knocked down by Riley Robertson, who also hasn't played in a bit. Whistle sounds a month for him, but longer for Gordy. Six oh six to go. There'll be one more media timeout, and we'll have the close of the game and the three stars. We'll see who the hat tricks decide to give the Litchfield Distillery Barrel lift to. We're getting a timeout called here. Timeout whistled. Timeout, Danbury. And it's being called by the hat tricks. So Danbury calls for time with six oh six left. Let's take a quick pause and come back in a moment. This isn't the proper media time, but we'll take it anyway. Quick pause here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. Word from our friends at New Haven Nighthawk Brewing. Brewed right here in Connecticut and featured at the Rabbit Hole, New Haven Nighthawk Brewing Company is the beverage of choice at the Danbury Arena. Grab a cold one and party like you're in the Elm City. A three-point game for Tobias Ojek. Caught the official in the gut. 
Brendan Dowler scoring the most recent goal. Ojuk getting an assist. Jacob Radcliffe also getting an assist on that goal as well. That's Radcliffe's fifth point. Sheehan in. Oh, had a great chance. Ojuk had his hands up, thinking that that was destined for the twine. Sorry, my friend, it wasn't. Falling down, threw it off the glass for Gonzalez. Three on two, they come. Muscal will glide it forward. Muscal walks in, drags, looks, and off his stick. Radcliffe will flip it forward for Ojek. Bias Ojek gave it off for Radcliffe. Gave it back. Ojek, shot, save made. Sheehan trying to get to the rebound. Won't be able to. Thrown across the Danbury goal crease by Rabchek. Abdella will dip his way out of a hit. Glides in. Looked like he caught maybe part of the protective netting, but no whistle on that. Four twenty left to go in regulation time. We'll have one more media timeout, and the three stars will get to lift the Litchfield Distillery's barrel. Borshev, through some traffic, takes on the defense all alone. Borshev will pull up and look for somewhere to go with it. Marshison tried to work it down low and smartly covered. Borshev having a couple of shoves, and that's. Well, we'll take a breather as we're finally at the pause for the media timeout. One quick pause. Back in a minute in the Denver Ice Arena. It's the spirit of hard work. The Batchers of Litchfield Distillery, in honor of the early farmers of Northwestern Connecticut, present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the Danbury hat tricks. Draw is down. Watertown will clear it the length of the ice. They'll ice it. Abby Robertson, the first player to get back on top of it. Watertown is, they've got their upcoming slate of games. I'm giving you Danbury's. Watertown fighting to secure their spot in the playoffs. And if any kind tonight would get them into the playoff spot. Three minutes, 51 seconds from having to put that on hold. They're on the road the next couple of games. Tomorrow, they're playing again in Binghamton at Visions Veterans Memorial Arena in the Valley of Opportunity. This will work it across two of the more staunch rivals in the FPHL. We'll be going at it tomorrow. 3.30 to go, Lord. Try and put it towards the blue line. No one there. Mescal settles, looks, threw it in front. Nearly cleared completely out. McGuire and McKittrick will grab it and go. McKittrick, some room to work. McKittrick threw it in front. Ruiz wanted the tip. It goes directly into the awaiting mitt of Adam Wisco.
Abdella and John Amatoditis jawing at each other. They're waiting to get all the hat trick players they want on the ice, which they have now. Draw one up to Gonzalez. They'll have to retreat into neutral space. They'll lob it in as we're coming up on the final three minutes of play here in regulation time. Long on, caught, and settled. We've got a whistle. Borshev jostling with Amantoditis. Borshev gestures to the crowd for some noise. Amantoditis is going to head off. He takes a penalty. Ruiz coming over to ask what was up exactly. Gets his answer. Looks to be just a two minute minor penalty. No, no, we'll have matching minors. Borshev's going off too. Two minute minor penalties to Borshev and Amantoditis for a frankly kind of funny looking interaction. Two minute matching minors with 2.48 to go. Shanna wait on the dot. We're gonna have two minutes of four on four skating time. Ratcliffe will glide in. Got to the circle, Ratcliffe. They'll pull it and look for a pass. Gonzalez steps in, winds up for the shot. It's stopped by Wisco. A 37 save effort for Wisco. He has played a good game. Frankie McClendon, two goals allowed, or sorry, uh, one goal allowed on 23 shots, 22 saves. The originally from Oakland, California man, but lives in Raleigh for a lot of the off season. He's bounced around a fair bit. He's a hockey player, so that's somewhat to be expected. Rap check over the middle, given to the circle, shot blocked by McDonald, caught him in the awkward part of his shin. Dowler lays the hit. Sheehan took a whack at it. Dowler tries to work this out. Dowler wanted to settle it, but couldn't. McDonald. We'll give it on around to Dowler. His net soft holds and waits for it. One fifteen to go in regulation time. 25 seconds left on the four on four time. Gingrich will glide in. McClendon with another kick save. Up to 24 saves for McClendon. On 25 shots faced. Kuznetsov takes a stick with them. Kuznetsov wants the shot stopped and Kuznetsov gets hit after the whistle. The officials are just going to try their best to usher these teams off the ice and play out the last 57 seconds. Danbury with the win would improve to 36, 6, and 5. They'd go to 105 points. First place in the FPHL. Watertown would drop to 17, 25, and 3. They'll have to wait until tomorrow for their next chance to sew up a postseason spot. It's a clean face-off win for the Wolves. Fumbled it, MLA on. They'll play it over the middle. 40 seconds left. Looks for the outlet. 
Glides in. Amontoditis gets checked by Borshev. They're out of the box now. That's over. Brian Wilson, who had his glove ready to go like he was a fan of the baseball game. Flew into Brendan Dowler's hands instead. He also was ready for it. The less prepared fan of the baseball game who somehow has it work out for him. We have all been there and all seen this. 27.2 seconds left to be played. We've got all our skaters on the ice, the officials. And to usher them on, and they can finish this out. Sheehan and Rapcheck will duel. McClendon pointing out directions as Sheehan wins the faceoff cleanly. It is a real jolt to the offense to have Brendan Sheehan back in the lineup. And back from the SPHL. 15 seconds left. Sheehan's helmet comes clean off his head. They'll play keep away and lob it back into the Watertown end of the rink. No whistle here, and that is that. The Danbury hat tricks have won. 4 1 the final, and we get more of a confrontation. The chords of Brass Bonanza ring out as the hat tricks skate onto the ice. Dowler takes down his man, and we might have a little bit more as McGuire and Dowler getting into it. Four one, the final. The officials are telling the Hattricks and Wolves to separate. At center ice, the Litchfield Distillery Barrel has been placed there. Corgan still jostling. Billy McCreary telling his guys to get to the celebration. McGuire talking still. The officials desperately trying to get now McClendon getting into it with one of the Wolves. Matt Voidy and John Krapinski are telling Frankie McClendon to stay out of any more. Robertson getting into it as well. Danbury will get the win, and the officials are pleading with the Watertown Wolves to go into their locker room. They'll walk off the ice. Ruiz directing his team to the post-game victory celebration. Who's going to lift it? Jay Mack. Johnny McDonald in victory over his head. He'll spin it, and there's the team. Ruiz will take his lap around the ice. Marcia Son and Gonzalez, who you see here, taking their victory lap. We'll have the three stars of the game in just a minute. Billy McCreary tipping his hat. Dmitry Kuznetsov tapping his stick and going for a lap to section 200. Now waves to the other half of the 200 section level. Brass Bonanza rings in the Danbury Ice Arena, just as it did in the days of the Whalers when they played here. Thirty-six, six and five is the Danbury record at the end of tonight. The rest of the off on ice personnel for the hat tricks heading off. Just waiting for the three stars. That's the only thing we're missing. Here we are. So the three stars of the game from the Danbury hat tricks. One goal and one assist. Number 88, Michael Marchison. 
Arshasan will get the third star for his two-point effort. A goal and an assist. The number two star of the night. Tonight's second star from the hat tricks. With 23 saves, number 39, Frankie McClendon. Goalkeeper Frankie McClendon. On the board, it's 23 saves. It should be 25 saves, I believe, in the online stats. And the number one star of the night, three points. There he is, Tobias Ojek. Waves his stick to the crowd and will head off. Danbury is back here on home ice next weekend, Friday night against the Mississippi Seawolves. We'll have it live. 7.30 will be the puck drop. Thank you so much for spending your time with us this evening. On behalf of everybody with the Danbury Hat Tricks, I'm Chris Lynch. We hope you enjoyed your time with us this evening. Be warm, be well, wherever you may be.